Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. Good morning. Welcome to the gathering. Go greet your neighbor. <laughs> Josh is not here today. He has COVID today, so I'm filling in. Get ready for worship. As I am stealing grapes from the kids over here, I'm glad you all are here. Would you take a minute and welcome each other on your right and your left as you come in this morning? I know we've done that already. I know we've done that, but it doesn't help to do it again, does it not? We're so glad you all are here. We got some new faces. It always is uh, interesting. As we come into worship, let's pray together as we continue this morning. God, how good it is to be in your house uh, together with people next to us, people in front and behind, and how good it is to just be in your presence. 
So would you uh, allow us to uh, feel your presence? Would you allow us to just be soaked in um, just being with you this morning? Allow us to um, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to experiencing you this morning in everything that we do. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Great, man. We'll give you another great. I tell you, it's one of those mornings, but God is good, amen? Amen. We've got Josh out with COVID. We need to be praying for Josh. I tell you, man. Get a call on Saturday, and uh, we have to step back, and we uh, have to pump, but we're so grateful that Natalie is is able to uh, lead us this morning. We've got Mark coming in on the keyboards a little bit to help us out. Uh, but we are so grateful for our band this morning that is helping us out. <clears throat> and I'm chewing cough drops, hoping my voice is uh, going to hold out. So uh, grateful that God has given us the opportunity to be together. A couple of things before we get to the prayer requests uh, for today. Uh, We've been talking about it the last couple of weeks, but I just want to remind you 
that today is the day that we are doing the Holston Conference uh, response team. Uh, we'll be here tonight at 5 o'clock in this space. Uh, this is the response team that is going to help us uh, kind of unpack uh, the uh, death by suicides that we've had in our church. Uh, we've had two within the last six weeks, uh, three, uh, four within the last two years. And um, this is the team that's going to help us kind of um, unpack that and deal with that uh, tonight. Uh, so we invite you to come. Uh, we will begin with a time of worship at 5 o'clock in this space. Uh, we will uh, break into some small groups. There will be some discussion questions that uh, they will um, have for us. And he's just the cutest little thing you've ever seen. With a cookie in hand and everything, uh, we will break into some discussion groups. Uh, they will have some feedback for us tonight, and then <laughs> we will uh, go home from there. But we will begin in this space at 5 o'clock tonight. We encourage you uh, to be here and um, be uh, ready to uh, embrace this time of, of healing and wholeness. Um, on the heels of that, I've invited Rick uh, Lay, our uh, lay leader for the district, uh, to come and to speak about another opportunity that is coming up for us next Saturday. <clears throat> Thank you, Melissa. Next Saturday, beginning at noon, we are going to have a prayer walk here at Keith Church. Your pastoral leadership here at this church, as well as pastoral leadership in the Hiawassee District, we felt like the critical incident response team is good, but it's not enough. We are, have a lot of things, great things going on at Keith Church. We've had over 40 people join this church, many by profession of faith. We've had baptisms. We've got great programs going on here in this church. And we need to come to God in a spirit of thanksgiving as well as a spirit of earnest prayer to keep these ministries going. As Paul told the Romans, the days are evil. And any time that good things are going on, Sometimes that's when we're visited by things that are not so nice. We're going to have 13 stations set up here in this church. Our district superintendent, Sandra Johnson, has encouraged the other 55 churches in the Hiawassee District to participate, either by doing this themselves or joining us this next Saturday. We'll have these 13 stations of significance here in this church, such as the space we are in today. We're going to divide up into groups, and we're going to pray in each of these places, as well as walking around the outside of the church, praying for the church as a whole. This space, the sanctuary, the parlor, our Nourish One Child area, the gym downstairs, we have these 13 places identified. We will have someone from the church stationed at each one. And we will be praying over these spaces, as I said, not only the prayer of thanksgiving, but a prayer for God to strengthen us. We've had many distractions over the last few weeks, but to strengthen us in our resolve, putting on the full armor of God, if you will, as we battle forward in the good things that we're trying to do in this community. So I encourage, this is for everybody, and I encourage everybody to come and participate. We need all of you. I think everyone will receive a blessing from doing this next Saturday at 12 noon. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Rick. As we come to a time of... Um lifting up our concerns and our joys. Um, please be in prayer 
for Linda Chestnut, a uh, member here at Keith. Uh, she is having some uh, problems with some um, fluid on her lungs. She is in the hospital with it uh, being drained off right now. So uh, be in prayer for Linda. Uh, also be in prayer uh, for the mother of Cassandra Heron. Uh, she fell yesterday and uh, broke her leg in a couple of different places. So uh, she is having surgery this morning at um, uh, Erlinger in Chattanooga. If you would be in prayer for uh, Cassandra's mother this morning. Are there other concerns, Cindy? Uh, All right. So Savannah Passmore Blair, <clears throat> that is on our prayer list, has uh, been rushed to the hospital. We're praying for them. Rhonda. We're continuing to pray for Rhonda's dad as he uh, is in the acute rehab in, in Florida. Cannon. Okay, your friend. What was his first name? Blake. Okay. Other concerns that we can lift up? Yep. Okay. All right. Your uncle? My Pat's, Pat's uncle. Okay. Joe? Yep, Joe's sister, um, who we've been praying for as um, dementia, uh, we've been uh, praying for her for a while, had some blood clots come up in her leg this week, and uh, had surgery uh, for that, so we've been praying for her this week. <clears throat> praying that I get my voice back for sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. Go ahead. Hmm. Did not realize that Joyce Lehman in our uh, church has COVID. Danny. Uh, my grandmother-in-law has COVID. Hmm. Okay. Amberly's grandmother. All right. Amberly's grandmother has broken her back in three places. So we need to be praying for her. Other concerns? that we can lift up? I'm sorry. Okay. All right, Cindy, we'll be praying for your son. It isn't just Josh that has COVID, um, his entire family has COVID. So, um, oh, no. Cecia and Georgia, they both have COVID, so oh. let's keep them in our prayers. And they were supposed to travel this week to Honduras. And so that has been uh, put off. Uh, their trip has been put off and rescheduled for later. <clears throat> Any other concerns? Anybody got any joy that we can celebrate today? I feel like we need some joy. All right, Mount Kilimanjaro. All right, that's good stuff. Yeah, Amelia. Hollis's birthday is Friday. She'll be 12 years old. How did that happen? 
Twelve year old in the house. I mean, what are you gonna do with that, man? <laughs> Wow. Other joys. Yeah, Mark. Wow. Monday is your last round. That's great, Mark. You get to ring the bell and, and do all that stuff. <laughs> That'll be great, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's been a long time coming. That's great, man. Congratulations. We had a chance to tell us. We had a great 24 hours plus with four young three adults. Best weekend ever. Yeah, the confirmation retreat uh, went well. They, they took, uh, what, four, four teenagers, three adults, and they came back with four teenagers, three adults, and uh, we have learned that one of our adults can talk our confirmation kids into a corner, that, uh, that I mean, they can be talked down, and who knew that? Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's kind of funny, but I, I know that, that you all had a great time, learned a lot, and, uh, and had a great experience, so we're glad the, that uh, our confirmation kids are back. <clears throat> Other joys that we can celebrate this morning. Other joys. Hey, Ella, before you leave, we want to congratulate you for winning the talent show, third place in the talent show. <laughs> Miss Ella, give it up. They told me that in the first service this morning. That's great. Very cool. Other joys that we can celebrate. <laughs> Two weeks in a row, man, Captain Von Trapp. No whistle or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Bridget said she melted down the gold whistle and put it around the letters this week. So... Uh, that's, that's the whistle around the letters this week. Other joys before we go to God in prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. Anything else? All right, guys, this morning I'm going to call us to a time of silent prayer as you pray there in your seats. I'm going to ask that Natalie give us a little praying music, if you can, just a little, maybe just the chorus of what we just played, and then uh, I will lead us in a time of, that'll be fun, that'll be fun. Let us pray together. Oh God, would you hear our prayers this morning as we come to you in silence? As we come to you with our prayers, would you hear our heart? Would you hear our prayers? Oh God, you are such a good God. You created us in love. You created us with a desire to know us and to be in relationship with you. God, you created us in, in a way that makes us want to know you more. God, we are grateful 
for the love that you gave us, for, for the love of a God who cared enough to come in person to this earth. A God who cared enough to come and take on flesh and blood and be here with his people. God, we are grateful for the love that you have for us, the love that you surround us with, the care, the compassion. God, we are grateful that you surround us with care in the bad times, that you surround us with love during the good times. That you are always with us during the good and the bad. May we feel your presence. May we know that you are near us. May we know that you call out to us in relationship. You are drawing us near. God, forgive us when we fail you. Draw us close to yourself in forgiveness and restore to us the new life that you give to us. Call us and empower us to be the people that you want us to be. God, we want to be your people. So allow us to do that. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Friends, we continue this morning in an attitude of prayer. You're invited to come and bring your financial offerings here to the altar. You're also invited to come and to uh, send a prayer uh, offering here at the altar as you uh, light a candle. But we invite you uh, to continue in an attitude of prayer during this time.
Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. We're going to restart that. You have been so, so good to me. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for that overwhelming 
never-ending, reckless love of God. Amen. We're uh, going to ask that the kids uh, join Pastor Mark, Miss Austin back there at the back for Children's Church. They're going to race to the back, see how fast they can get back there. They're all excited about going to kids' church. Or maybe not. <laughs> They're excited. Tell her I'm going to borrow your bulletin for a minute. You can stand for just a minute for the reading of the gospel today. This is coming out of Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. While he was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and, and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister, and mother. May God bless the reading of God's holy word. You may be seated. <clears throat> How many of y'all have done um, any of the genealogy studies, any of the family tree stuff? 33 and me, or any of the uh, genealogy studies? had a friend that did that recently, and she came up with a surprise. That her parents were not married when they said that they were married. They were married about six years uh, later than when they uh, were married. And uh, she was kind of shocked by that. She has not asked her parents about that yet. <laughs> Just kind of one of those family secrets that you learn when you start doing genealogy studies, isn't it? Have you ever been accused of, by a family member, by somebody saying, you act just like your mother? Anybody ever say that? <laughs> Is that true, Dwayne? <laughs> you act just like your mother, or that's just like what your father would say. Anybody ever say that? What are they referring to? Maybe a personality trait. Maybe a laugh. Maybe, maybe you cook a dish just like your mother did. Maybe it's a personality trait or maybe it's a family story like you tell just like your parents did. Maybe it's a family trait like you carry down, like I carry my dad's blue eyes and white hair. I get that from his side of the family. That's totally his mother and aunts and everybody on his side. I can't deny that. But I get my orange blood from my mom. There is no denying that when we sit and we watch football together, that there is no denying that I get my, my Tennessee orange blood from my mom. There's no denying that. It's funny. When we look at family trees, isn't it? So what does Jesus' family tree look like? Now, I'm not talking about his, his mother and his father. We know a little bit about his siblings. We know Jesus was the oldest. And we know he had siblings. But when we talk about being a part of Jesus' family tree... This excerpt in, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, that we read, it says that when we do the will of God, when we do what God says, guess what? We're part of Jesus' family. When we do what God says, that makes us a part 
of Jesus' family tree. With these words in Matthew's gospel, Jesus is redefining what family looks like to those that hear God's word and do it. Not just those that share the same bloodline or the same household. See, Jesus is enlarging the view of family and who belongs to who. Those who follow the word of God are Jesus' family. And sometimes that includes his actual family, like Mary. And so we see that, that Mary, at the foot of the cross, is weeping over her son, but also over her teacher, her Savior, her Lord. Mary is not only just the mother of Jesus, she's also a follower of Jesus. And Jesus sees his mother not only just as his mother, but also as a devoted follower. See, we're looking at the seven phrases, the seven last statements of the cross. And on <clears throat> Ash Wednesday, we started with the first phrase, Father, forgive them. These are the last sayings of Jesus uh, in his life. Father, forgive them was the first phrase we looked at. The phrase last week was what? Today you will be with me in paradise, talking to the thief on the cross. Today's phrase, here is your son, here is your mother. Jesus is talking to Mary and to John, the beloved disciple. We hear the words of a son and a savior. Woman, behold your son. Talking about John. And to John, behold your mother. See, Jesus as the firstborn son knows that Mary is going to need support after his death. So he instructs John to take care of one another. And Jesus also knows that all of his followers are going to need guidance and support after his death. So he sets up Mary and John as the example for all the others to follow. Through three, these three words on the cross, here is your son, here is your mother, Jesus is in giving Jesus is giving instruction to the church and all of its followers. Jesus is giving an example on how we need to care for each other. Now friends, hear me say this very clearly. We do a good job of caring for each other here at the church, do we not? Y'all think we do? How do we do that? Somebody give me an example. Nurse one child. We care for the kids in our community by giving them uh, food on the weekends. Individual circles. We, uh, we provide meals for those who need meals, for those who are bereaving. How else do we provide for families in need? We text, we phone call. I was laughing in the first service. I know some ladies that um, they get a cold and they call somebody up and say, man, I sure could use some of your potato soup. And uh, they, they send somebody to the grocery store to buy potatoes. And they, before you know it, there's a crock of potato soup at somebody's door. You know, they just take care of each other. How else do we take care of each other? Prayer groups? Yeah. Yep. And there's like 20 pairs out by the office. Yeah. Yep. There's 20 pairs of leggings up here. Yeah, absolutely. How else do we care for each other? The warming center. 
Yeah, I meant to mention that as a prayer concern. Um, the shower bus is a ministry. Um, it's, a, it's a bus that, that has a shower on it that um, goes around and helps those who are homeless uh, take showers. And it actually burnt to the ground on, on Friday. It actually caught on fire and burnt to the ground. Um, um, I, they think the compressor in it blew up and, and it burnt to the ground. So there's no shower bus uh, available for the homeless now to take showers in. Uh, it's probably going to cost about $30,000 to replace this shower bus. And so as we were talking about this morning, at this time, there's no showers available for those who are homeless because the shower bus is out of commission. So uh, that, that's a problem. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that we're not only collecting money for here at the church, uh, but we're in prayer for to see, um, you know, how we can, can offer solutions to that. But, yeah, the shower bus ministry is, is something that, that we can be in prayer for. <clears throat> See, our, our church does a great job at caring for each other. Uh, we call people when we're sick. We call people when we're having a hard time. We have a wonderful group of trained Stephen ministers who provide extra support for people. We visit neighborhood. Uh, we visit our neighborhood door to door and invite people to church. And guess what? They come. Imagine that. Now we aren't perfect. There's some people that, that get forgotten. There's some people that seem to get more attention than others. We forget about people. We lose track of some people. We hold back in welcoming people that we may not be as familiar with. But friends, in the church, the good, bad, and indifferent news is that we are all related. Whether we want to be or not. We are all related. And because we belong to each other, we belong to God. Because we belong to God, we belong to each other. And as Christ loved you, our command is to love one another, everyone and everywhere, everywhere, whether you think they are a part of our family or not. Anybody ever have a disagreement with their sibling? <laughs> Sam Roberts was telling me earlier about one of his sisters chasing him with a butcher knife. <laughs> he said, I just happened to be a little faster than she was. <laughs> we belong to each other, right? And we're not always going to agree. Being a part of a family means that we're not always going to agree. We have different worship styles in our church. That's why we're up here at 11 o'clock. That's why we have a sanctuary service at 9 o'clock. We have different political views. We have different views on who we want to win a basketball game or a football game. Thanks be to God, we won that one last night, Marcus. We pulled it out. We have different ways of raising children and living our lives. But in spite of our differences, we are called to love one another. John Wesley said it best in what he called the Catholic spirit. He said in our essentials, we have unity. In our non-essentials, we give liberty. And in all things, we have love. See, friends, I know that things are hard in our church right now. We've had a hard season of deaths in our congregation. We still don't have a clear answer on where our denomination is going on the issues of of sexuality, and I don't know when we're going to have those answers. And there seems to be no easy answers for the questions that we have. 
But the answers that I give you this morning is to continue to love each other. To continue to show care for each other. To continue to follow the example of Jesus. We're given a gift today. We're given the gift of coming to God's table. The gift of communion. And we come to this table not because we earn it. Not because we deserve it. We come to this table because God has invited us. See, every time we come to this table, we are reminded that when we take the bread, that this is the body of Christ who gave his life for the forgiveness of our sin. And every time we take of the the cup, we remember that this is the blood of Jesus that was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Friends, in the Methodist church, we, we have what this is called an open table, which means you don't have to be a member of this church in order to come and to participate in communion today. This is not the communion table of Keith Church. This is not the communion table of, of my communion table. This is God's communion table. And guess what? God invites you. Because God invites you, you are welcome to come. Plain and simple. So may you come today. May you come today and be reminded of the love that God has for you. May you come today and be reminded of the good news that God loves you, that God forgives you, and that God has a plan for your life. Would you pray with me, please? Oh God, would you speak to us now during this moment? Allow us to know of your love that is always with us, always surrounding us, always fighting for us, always present with us. May we know your presence and your peace that is with us during this time of Holy Communion. May we be guided by your love and your care for us. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I invite those who are assisting in the serving on communion to come forward at this time.
understand as you're able. to Nat for leading us today, are we not? (laughs) Keep in mind, we'll be back in here tonight at five uh, for worship, the critical response team. We will be back in here next Saturday at 12 for the prayer walk. And then we'll be back in here next Sunday at 11 for worship. 
I hope you will join us back then. I pray that you will go in peace this week with God going with you and Max going everywhere. Go this day in peace. Amen.